when um I mean, how long have you been together and when where where did you meet how did you meet actually in two days time it, we would have officially been boyfriends for seven years wow. yeah. but we met we met seven years ago longer. at march yeah so march 2013 is when we met so yeah seven years ago we've been married for three years in LA, so, we met in Los Angeles. He was there for some award show thing. I was doing like a Nickelodeon Kids Choice or something. I don't know, but like the British version, like they have like a couple of British awards that you present. But wow. yes, I was, I was over there for that. And we met a, a mutual friend invited me to dinner and Lance to dinner and I was really late. And he showed up an hour late with like beautiful blonde women dripping off his arms. <laughs> they just, it was just the people there, like one was my manager, one, like the rest of us, the Nickelodeon team. They're gorgeous. Like, They're yeah, gorgeous. Well, they're gorgeous. But anyway, we turned up for dinner, got talking, and it was all the small talk about, of, oh, the Olympic Village, we, like, how cool would that, that would make a really fun like, movie. And I was like, it was such like small talk. It was like- Terrible movie, but you know. It was, yeah, it was all, all the small talk. And then I woke up the next morning to a text from Lance. Well, because he put his number in my phone before I left, because I went back to work. He stayed out. He put his number in my phone. And after the last digit of the number, he put a winky face. What straight man does that in another man's phone? <laughs> um, and when you say I put it in your phone, you actually got your assistant to go get you. To, yeah, to go. Um, and I, <laughs> you got your assistant gave me your phone and I put my number in. It, it was a very good move, to be fair, because your assistant was, you know, hot. <laughs> and the rest is history as well. Yeah. Really yeah. Um, so, of course, you know, um, ha ha married life happened and then you, you also then had the new addition to the family in Robbie. How, how has that been, you know, from, you know, from seven years ago when, when you were met to kind of then now married life and now being parents? How have you found the, the, the change and the transformation? I mean, it's been massive. I lived in Plymouth and I didn't know anything other than Plymouth. And then, you know, spent a lot of time in California. Then we ended up moving to London and so many things have changed. Um, it seems like a lifetime ago, to be honest. I don't know. It's been, at the, some, some instances it feels like um, it's gone really quickly, but then in others it's like, oh my gosh, that was like, felt like an eternity ago when we were just... When he's mad at me, it feels like an eternity. That's <laughs> <laughs> when things are when things are going well, great, put, it's like a blink of the eye. Yeah. Well, if yeah. you put your mugs in the dishwasher, I wouldn't get yeah, some. Yeah. You know, come on. It's, it's, <laughs> I mean, a lot's changed for me. I, I'm now living in this place where you know no one knows how to talk right. <laughs> a boot is something on a car. A lift isn't something for ballet. It's an, you know it's something in a building. It's very very con the whole thing's very very confusing for me. <laughs> Yeah. Have you, um, and, and with that whole new responsibility of parenting, it was interesting, Tom, because you said about it brought you that change in perspective. Did, did it do anything else else for you both becoming parents? It, ma it makes me cry at films now. I cry, I never used to cry at films, and now I like, it's kind of unlocked a whole different level of emotions, protectiveness. I find, like, it's, it, it's so weird that becoming a parent does change the way that you think about so many things. Yeah. And you just, you'll just do anything to protect your family. And it's really quite a, it's a weird, it like literally just like unlocks it. And like this emotion of like, you know, when I go on planes and we watch films and like I've watched the film before, but I watch it this time. And as a parent, you watch it and you're like, oh my gosh. And then I'm like, why am I crying? <laughs> I, I, I mean, I literally cry at some of the most random things now. And he never used to cry. Never. Wow, no way. I, uh, I, I once, had a had a therapist say to me Lance one day you are going to learn that you can't control everything and you're going to be so much happier and I was like well that's absurd because I can control everything uh, <laughs> <laughs> and obviously that's not true and having a kid is like makes it crystal clear that you cannot control anything anymore and so I mean, having him is, it's sort of about stepping back and letting whatever is happening be. Um, and it, whether you like it or not, there it is. And so just, and it's really been this amazing um, new world of not being able to and not attempting to control everything, just letting things happen and be. I mean, we don't let Robbie like climb up onto the, you know, thing and jump off. <laughs> 
No, no, <laughs> not letting him do whatever he wants. But like, <laughs> you know, I, especially in the first year, like we don't, you know, we're not using some army of nannies, which is fine. Other people do, but we made a decision that we wanted to do as much as we could by ourselves. Um, and so like in that first year, when you'd go off to practice, I'd be home trying to write a book. And I, we had, you know, a Todd, uh, like a kid who was learning to crawl and say little things and run around and had an opinion and wanted to do things. And, you know, in the past, if anyone walked into my office when I was in the middle of the scene, I would get, I would, I'd get kind of angry, as you know. Mm, yeah. Leave me alone. And, it, and then it, you can't do that anymore. It's like, all right, here you are. You are the boss. He's the boss. And like understanding that letting go of control actually is this amazing little secret pathway to happiness. Yeah. And, and I guess also it can be quite freeing as well, actually, I guess. Mm. Terrifying and freeing. Yeah. yeah. And um, I wanted to ask, because you are both, you know, so busy. How do you get that balance of work and then personal, you know, for your relationship and also also for Robbie out? Do you have any like little... T tips and tricks that you use or how, how do you find that balance i mean it starts to get a lot easier now that we sleep trained robbie and he actually goes to bed at seven and sleeps until seven so we actually have our evenings back now instead of you know spending hours trying to put him to bed and yeah. you know, so that whole ordeal is over but to be honest you know i when i'm home from training it's family time and that's it so i just make sure i focus on that i have a couple of mornings off each week um from training and those are the times where I try and do little bits um, of errands that I need to run for myself but most of the time it's when I'm not training it's family time um, and you know it's just about making sure that at the end of the day my family comes first so with you know there have been occasions where Robbie's been sick and I've had to like take the morning off or to go to the doctor or you know little things like that um, it's just I've just had to, we both had to just adjust the way that we do things now yeah, strict kind of schedule. And it doesn't mean you're always going to stick to it, but knowing that on the other side of uh, dinner, it's family time and dedicating myself to getting as much done as possible during the week so that my weekends belong to family um, and to fixing things that break and, you know, being a dad. <laughs> Robbie lo Robbie's favorite at the moment is daddy fix it. He yeah. knows that I can't. <laughs> but he goes, <laughs> He goes down, he points at light bulbs and things like, Daddy, fix it. And I'm like, yeah, Daddy, fix Daddy it. Fix. Yeah, when that toolbox comes out. He's yeah, he, he, <laughs> loves the, he loves when the toolbox he comes out. Toolbox. He gets, so he try, like, goes with a screwdriver and tries to like screw things. and like think, hey, Bobby, fix it. Oh, yeah. Bobby, fix it. Oh, he calls yeah. himself Bobby as well, which is really cute. He's yeah. like Bob the Builder then, really. He's yeah, exactly. He really is. He yeah. is yeah. Bob the Builder.